Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is your boy Kamal once again, and it is a very interesting differential equation we have today. We have y times the second derivative plus y squared equal to one half the square of the first derivative. Okay, cool. So it's a nice nonlinear differential equation. And it's something called an autonomous differential equation because we don't have any x terms involved. And we can solve it using one of my favorite transformations for these type of equations. We're going to let the first derivative here, dy by dx, equal to u, which implies that the second derivative equals du by dx. Now notice that we would have a differential equation in three variables, u, x, and y, which is, of course, far from ideal. So we'll write this as du by dy times dy by dx using the chain rule. And dy by dx is our u variable, so we have u times du by dy equal to d square y by dx squared. Okay, cool. So what does that imply for our differential equation? Well, this implies that we now have y times u du by dy plus y squared equal to one half of u squared. Okay, and this is actually quite nice. If I expand using the reciprocal of y, and that of course means we lose the solution y equal to zero, which is of course very boring, and we're not interested in it because, well, it's boring. Who wants a boring solution? So if we expand using one by y, we have u times du by dy, plus y equal to u squared divided by 2 times y. And this is now beginning to look like a Bernoulli equation, and that would be even more clear if I make the transformation that is letting u squared equal to z. Why on earth would I want that? Because if we differentiate with respect to y, we have 2u du by dy equal to dz by dy. And this implies that we have now, the first term would be one half of dz by dy. Then we have a y term. Then we have u squared, which is z divided by two times y. And of course we can expand by a factor of two, meaning that we have dz by dy plus two times y equal to z divided by y. Let's now write this in a slightly different manner. We're gonna write this as dz by dy minus z divided by y equal to two times y, negative two y that is, because we're in search of an integrating factor. And we know how to figure out how to calculate for an integrating factor from our course on differential equations, but here it's intuitively clear what would work. Let's expand using one by y. That way, we have 1 by y dz by dy, terribly sorry about that, dz by dy minus z by y squared equal to negative 2. Now, notice that the left-hand side is the derivative of a product. It's the derivative, with respect to y, of z by y. Okay, cool. And this thing equals negative 2, so we integrate with respect to y dy here, wait a minute, dy, dy, then that means we have z divided by y equal to negative 2y plus a constant of integration a, and I'll expand by y to get z here equal to a times y minus 2y squared. Okay, cool. Now what exactly was z? Well, z here was defined to be u squared. So we have u squared equal to ay minus 2y squared, which of course implies that u equals plus or minus root a minus 2y squared. And u was defined to be the first derivative of y with respect to x. So that means we have dy by dx equal to plus or minus root a minus, no wait, it's a times y minus 2y squared. Terribly sorry about that. And now we have a nice separable differential equation to solve. On separation of variables, we have dy divided by root a y plus, no wait, it's minus 2y squared plus or minus equal to dx, and we integrate both sides, and that means we have x plus b on the right-hand side, but what about the integral on 
the left, we're going to let i here we call the integral of dy divided by root ay minus 2y squared. And we're going to adopt a completing square approach for the function in the denominator. We have ay minus 2y squared, so we'll factor out negative 2. We have y squared minus a by 2y. So we have negative 2y squared minus 2y a by 4, and that's our missing term. We expand using the square of a by 4, so a squared by 16 minus a squared by 16. And that means this whole thing is going to be y minus a by 4 squared. So we have negative 2 y minus a by 4 squared minus a squared by 16, which gives us a squared by 8 minus 2 times terribly sorry about that, 2 minus y, 2 times y minus a by 4 squared. Sorry, I forgot how to talk for a moment. So a y minus 2y squared. That's what we have. So our target integral i equals the integral of dy divided by root a squared by 8 minus 2 times y minus a by 4. Whole thing squared. And now all we need is a nice substitution. So we're going to let y minus a by 4, let the whole thing equal to t. No, wait, we could use a divided by root 8 times t. That would work out perfectly well. And wait, we need this one to be a root 2 turn. Okay, so we have dy here equal to a divided by root 2 times root 8 is going to be root 16, so that's going to be a by 4 dt. And that means our integral, let me just minimize this a little bit, this implies that our integral i equals a by 4 dt divided by root. We have a squared by 8 minus a squared by 8 times t squared. And of course, a squared by 8 is going to be factored out. So we have a by 4 times 1 by a by root 8. And root 8 is, of course, 2 times root 2, if I remember math. Yeah, I do. So this is what we have outside. And we have the integral of dt divided by root 1 minus t squared, which is, of course, the inverse sine function. The a's cancel out. we got some cancellation happening here as well. So we have root 2 times the inverse sine of t, which is pretty nice. That's what the integral sorts out to, which implies that our differential equation, which resulted in plus or minus i, so that's plus minus root 2 times inverse sine of t. What exactly is t? Well, t was quite a bit of stuff. So that implies the t here equals root 8 times root 2. That's again going to be 4 divided by a times y minus a by 4, which is, of course, 4y by a minus 1. So that means we have the inverse sine of 4y by a minus 1 equal to x plus b. And we can solve this for y in terms of x, of course, this implies that 4y by a minus 1 equals, uh -huh. so we have the sine of plus or minus 1 by root 2 x plus b. Then the 1 can be taken to the other side. We have the expansion using a, so we have 4y equal to a times the sine of, let's see, we have plus or minus x. Well, the plus minus 1 by root 2 can be absorbed into b, so we'll call that b plus or minus x by root 2 plus 1. And we can expand by the reciprocal of 4 as well, and the 4 can be, the 1 by 4 can be absorbed into y, uh, into the constant a as well. And that here is our solution of y in terms of x, which solves our differential equation. That was pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. 
be sure to like and subscribe do drop me a follow on instagram and in case you like the channel and the effort i'm putting out consider supporting me on patreon all links in the description box thank you see you next time